They call themselves Christians and they show no respect to his life at all because it is the becoming he talked about. He didn't talk about all these nonsensical things. Secondly, we show no respect. There is no awe in our hearts that He is the one who has created universes after universes. And what are we compared to Him? We sit down on Him like... What ego human beings are like bubbles. Of course, he was made of the Brahma Tattva itself, the Divine Love itself, so he could not be killed. Moreover, he had to be born after Krishna because Krishna had said that this Divine Power of God does not die, it is not killed. Just to prove that, he took this form, this gross form of Christ, came on this earth. But human beings, you know, they have no eyes to see anything. They know what is a diamond, they know what is a precious cloth is, but they don't know what a precious thing it was that he came on this earth. Now think of it. The situation was horrible. No question of talking to anyone about God or about realization. But even to talk about dharma itself, righteousness, was very difficult. I mean, what ignorance must have covered those people that they crucified Him? Then even the disciples never recognized Christ. When He was crucified, they said, now He is dead. Then when he rose, nobody would believe it. There are all kinds of theories even about the shroud that they have found on. Of course, there was a cloth which was tied on to his face, which was pulled up. That's why his face looks that elongated and disfigured. But that cloth was left just there. I mean, what is so important about that shroud, I can't understand. It's the blood of Christ. One should be ashamed of oneself. The ignorance with which people looked at him. You can't imagine, if you see from that angle, how people are managing themselves with their ego and living in complete darkness and self-certifying themselves that they are the people who can judge even God. 
and hardly they allowed him to live for three or four years. He did not do any harm whatsoever to anyone. You cannot blame any community for that. If he was born in India, they might have done the same. What did they do to Muhammad Sahib? The same thing. But why there are so many thieves as shown in his life, only a contrast, were allowed to get out? Why this compromise was possible and why it was not with Christ? Do we also do with us the same thing today? That we compromise ourselves with thieves who are negative people. And we do not mind Christ being crucified. Now, as you know that He created all the Brahmandas. Brahman means an universe. Now the universe of the sun, out of that universe has come out this earth. Out of that you have come out. And in your Agya Chakra, He has created a small Virat, as they call it. He exists within your Agya Chakra. This sacrifice is very, very significant. And though it is gross, in subtle it has happened. To take the awareness through this center of Agya was done by Christ, by His crucifixion. He came as a gross person, just like a gross human being. His body died, but did not die because that body was also made of that imperishable divine vibrations, as you call it, radiations, or this Brahma, they did not die. And that's why the body did not die. And He resurrected with His body. He had to die to show that the body, though dies, can be saved. That's why He had to be crucified. Otherwise He could not have shown you. But it's actually it was experimented in the Vaikuntha, as you call it, that He died and then resurrected to show that this does not die. Krishna has said, Nainam chidanti shastrani, nainam dahati pavaka. It is not killed by any weapon. Neither it is burned by any fires. Nor is this blown by any wind. Nachainam kledayantapo na shosayati maruta. Neither nothing can suck it. That spirit is He. When they saw Him being resurrected, then they started saying, Oh, He was the one. <coughs> then His disciples believed Him. What ignorance! What darkness! What darkness! It's like telling an ant about human civilization. And this gross happening took place when in the subtle also the same happening had to take place. Like when you say Moses crossed the river. This was the happening of void being crossed 
by the primordial master. So in the subtle whatever is done is expressed in the gross in this manner. And this is exactly what happened when Christ was crucified. But again you cannot crucify Him. Now He has become Ekadasha Rudra, as described, the eleven Rudras, as you know very well. These are all the powers of Shiva given to Him. Up till now, till He was born, Krishna had given Him His powers, and that He became Mahavira. He was even placed above Krishna. But now, when He will come, He'll be bestowed with the destructive powers of Shiva, eleven of them. One is sufficient to finish all the universes. And that's what is described as the coming of the Christ. You cannot crucify Him anymore. And the time has come for all of us to be prepared for us to receive Him. We are not yet ready to receive Him. Unless and until you are realized, you cannot receive Him because if you remain unrealized till He comes, you'll be finished, you'll be gone, you'll be destroyed. He'll just come to destroy all the nonsensical things. So this short time should be used for your emancipation and for your development. But when we think of Christ, how human beings, you see, put up pretensions, all kinds of pretensions, you see, like they act, enact how Christ was crucified. They'll wear all the beautiful jewels and everything and they will enact. It's mockery going on. If you have to really come to resurrection, then you must awaken Christ within yourself in the Agya Chakra. If you cannot do it, all this enactment, even I've seen some people in Spain, they say, are enacting as crucified. I mean, this is mockery going on in this world. We are living with pretensions and falsehoods. All these things are going to take us nowhere. We have to face ourselves. We have to awaken Christ within ourselves. We have to bow to Him in full understanding of how great He is. On the contrary, we always bend towards people who are pretentious, who make a circus out of Him. It's a mockery going on everywhere. This carrying the cross or any drama, I mean, it was such a miserable thing. And to enact it, I don't know why people want to do that. I just can't understand. I can't bear it. But, I mean, if you have feelings, you can see within yourself. It cannot be a ceremony, a ritual. To be sacrificed and to be resurrected is the actuality, is the becoming is not any drama. And people want to see a drama like that and be satisfied. For us Sahaja Yogis, it is important to understand the significance of Christ's life. That His body was the only body was made of these radiations. All other bodies were human bodies. 
all the incarnation, even that of Krishna's when he came on this earth, where having human qualities that Mother Earth existed in the body. Now the Mother Earth exists as a magnetic force. She is nothing but a magnetic force. If the magnetic force is the only part of the energy of Christ, then it cannot be destroyed. But we are, as we human beings are, we are very gross and the magnetic force of the Mother Earth also we do not know. We do not feel it within ourselves. The day we start feeling that magnetic force within us, we'll give up all these nonsensical movements of extremes. We'll settle down into our gravity. But we are not even sensitive to that magnetic force as the birds are. After realization, you do become subtle enough to feel that magnetic force. And you can ask the Mother Earth to take away your problems, to take away your sins. She'll suck it. Once you become that subtle, she'll work it out, no doubt. But you have to become that subtle. Unless and until you become that evolved, you cannot touch her subtler side, which is the magnetic force, while Christ's body was made of that magnetic force itself. Now, when he was resurrected, they celebrate the Sunday, because as you have seen that he has millions and millions of suns and he's made of sun. He's the essence of sun. The sun has got the force of oxygen within it. And this oxygen is responsible for creating Brahmandas after Brahmandas. You see, when the sun's rays fall on the tree, we take everything for so granted. The tree blossoms, yields fruits, the fruits have seeds and then again they sprout into trees. Without the sun, nothing would exist on this earth. And that is why we worship Him on a Sunday. Because He was Son, actually He resides in the Son, we can say. Now when we go to the left, we actually go very much away from Him, to the negative side. We become very negative, like when we go to the left side, which you know, we go very much away from him and our agya gets caught up, as you say, the back side of it. You go to your right extremes, then you disown him, you cross your limits. You cannot go beyond Him. And that is how when you go to the right, you cross all sense of decency, decorum and humility. So in both ways, you go in the opposite directions, much away from Him. Ego is the result of right-hand movement. 
because the Christ essence does not create the necessary action on people who move too much to the right and also on the left. So on one side he fights the left side, the superego, on the other he fights the ego in human beings. That's why you have seen, if you are possessed you have to take the name of Christ. Only His name can take you away from your positions. Lord's Prayer has got all the essences to take away the positions. But not Lord's Prayer said by any dictum and Harry. He is to be connected with Lord Jesus Christ, then only if you say it has an effect and such a mantra is an awakened mantra. Right hand side, when you move, you have to be humble in your heart because He resides in your heart as Spirit, because He is the Spirit. And this Spirit gets insulted when you go too much on the right hand side and that's why ego-oriented people get a heart trouble. On the left hand side, in the super-ego area, Christ is a terror. They are frightened of His name. They run away from Him because they know the Ekadasha Rudra that He is. So on one side He is mild in the sense He recedes from away from the people who are egoistical, ego-oriented. He doesn't like buffoons and idiots. Donkeys that He was riding is the suggestion of these donkeys who are ego-oriented, he tried to control the donkey. But the left-hand side are the people, these horrible negative people, they get frightened of him, absolutely frightened. You take Christ's name and they just run away, depart, no, nothing doing, we are not going to face him, oh God, he's gone. Now this mark is the sign of his blood actually. And that's why this sign is described as the person's. Even if you show this color, they run away. But one has to understand the significance of Christ with patience, with humility, because He is the one who has created universes after universes. Here you cannot just sit on a table, let's have it out or see, let's discuss. There's no dogma going on. He's a living God and living God cannot be discussed by human beings. You have to become superhuman beings to discuss Him, to understand Him. And the more you rise, the more you are filled with awe. Oh God! And when you realize that He is the support of the universe, He is our support, then you feel very powerful that nobody can possess you if He is your support. But you cannot just sort of possess Christ as your own. You cannot say, oh, Christ is mine. You, nobody can possess Him. You have to surrender to Him so that you become His possessions, so that He looks after you. 
his greatness cannot be described in words as a child as a son he is the giver of joy one cannot describe how he looked after his mother it's impossible no words can describe the understanding of christ for his mother his love his gentleness his care his devotion dedication his shraddha cannot be described and you know that he came as an evolved shri ganesh and at the back he is shri ganesh in front he is kartikeya very powerful eleven rudras and this has given him the highest position so on this day we have to think how he was resurrected for us more than him his mother had to suffer his crucifixion it was too much because she knew all about him she knew all this was going to happen and she was in a human form as a mother and her only loving son being crucified in her presence we should not glorify the cross for one reason because christ was crucified on that but cross is the sign of the agya chakra also because the same swastika which was tetravalent equally distributed is expressed as an evolved symbol that is a cross so when we glorify cross we are glorifying our agya by which we accept the life of dedication and of sacrifice and if we look forward after the cross we know that it is resurrection and the resurrection that you are going to actualize in this lifetime but now give up all nonsensical ideas about your seekings and useless ramblings seeking means not knowing about anything but becoming something for that christ crucified himself he resurrected himself so that you all could be resurrected so you have to today thank him for giving you the lead of resurrection and in this lifetime only you are going to be resurrected and you are going to see with your own eyes your resurrection as the disciples saw the resurrection of christ this is being all promised and this must happen to all of you so we should rejoice and be happy that the time has come for a mass resurrection and such a great event we are facing we are such fortunate people give up our small visions and our petty hankerings 
our small little lives in which we live like frogs. Expand yourself and think that today you are facing the drama of mass resurrection. Not only that, but you are maneuvering it. So rejoice and be happy that what Christ did 2000 years back, today we are going to do it. That's why Easter is a special day for all of us. It's really a very special day because in our lives the death has died and we are resurrected. May God bless you all.